One day I was waiting in the lobby for the elevator. The door slid aside, and there she stood. The prettiest girl I had ever seen. She was the operator. There were three or four other people on the elevator, and I was the last one on floor number 10. And she opened the door, and I said, thank you. And she said, you're welcome. That was the total conversation, that first contact. Of course, in the next few days, I saw her. But I was so backward and bashful that I didn't say anything to her except Tim. She <laughs> said, yes, I know. <laughs> Thank goodness she broke the ice. She said, do you know where you can get some good chop suey? How about that for an opening? <laughs> I said, sure. The cafe across the street is a Chinese cafe. They serve chop suey. I sensed that she set that up. <laughs> I realized later she did. When I said I eat there every day, she said, oh. <laughs> I realized I had an opening. And we had chop suey, and we got acquainted. I found out her name was Wilma. She found out my name was Paul. I found out that she was divorced and had a two-year-old girl. She found out I was about to be drafted. Well, that wasn't good. Well, you know what? I think it was two days later she brought that little girl downtown. This is Barbara. This was Barbara. She was my older sister. That's right. Barbara was two years old. She had a little red snowsuit, white fur hat, white fur muff that she was proud of. And when her mother introduced me to her, she held her arms out to me, and I was done for. Well, I did go away to war. Your mother waited for me three years. We got married right there in my mother's living room, and uh, we had a 63-year honeymoon. And as you often say to me, when we part company, you say, life is good. And I have to think, yeah, life is good, even though I, I've lost my sweetheart. Who was it that said the best thing a man can do for his children is to love their mother? I did my best. <laughs> you did. We were real lovers, and uh, every day is a memorial for her. Mm -hmm.